Hello everybody, Marie by Design here and today I've come back with a video as I've promised um, showing you how to fit my bag bottom onto my plastic plan. Okay, as you can see I've done some extra stitches and before I do that I just wanted to say, uh, just wanted to show you how I deal with the plan yarn when crocheting because this is a seven millimeter crochet hook um, I could have done with a larger crochet hook but I hadn't got a bigger size than that so this is a seven millimeter crochet hook this is stiffer plastic so you have to give it, you know, um, you have to do some work with your hands to get the stitches through, to get the plan through. Okay, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I'm going to pull down my camera now so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Right. Let me just explain something. In my first video, I did how to make the plan, the plastic yarn. And I showed you how to link the pieces together and how to cut it into strips out of plastic bags. Reason, and as I said in that video, the reason because I'm using this type of plastic, this stiffer plastic, is because Iceland bought my shopping in a load of these bags. They're not printed, they're just plain and they're awkward to use for anything else other than recycling and doing baskets, crocheting. I don't know if it'll work with knitting. I haven't had a go, but I'll probably have a go at that. And see what I can make out of that but that's for another video but concentrating on this basket I did a lot more stitches in my original video but because it was it because it was taking up it was taking a long time to do it and yeah and my hands were getting really tired that I chose to downsize and make a basket now and that's when I decided because I want to make handmade crochet bags and knitted bags so I have got one on the go that isn't completed yet but it won't need a it won't need a, a bag bottom on it I'll show it you and show you one that I've already done um, okay so this video this is a PU lever I had to read I had to read my description um, on on the item I bought because I thought it was um, faux leather I suppose PU is a type of faux leather um, anyway so it, some bag bottoms they come with already little um, little uh, what you call it they're in gold brass little feet you would call it so that it stands up but as you can see that's standing up as you can see that's standing up all right on its own anyway without those but i will invest in some of those as well but i just wanted to do this because i should be using this for my um crafting odds and ends um and i thought i'd you know do it in recyclable plan um but as I say, this is stiffer. You can get thinner bags and much more pliable bags as I started off with. Um, but as I say, I want it, I've got absolutely loads of these, so I'll be I should be using majority of them up. Other than that, you can use the these type of bags for like say what I was using them for was lining my kitchen floor because I was painting some fencing indoors because the weather wasn't very good. That's what I did. So you can use it to, to do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so as I was saying, going back on this, um, what I do because it's quite, 
it's not in a state where you can use it yet i mean look see what i do is i twist it first and get it into a pliable state twist it first and then wrap it around my hand so it's a lot easier to work with bear in mind some of these um, some of these stitches are a bit stiff to work with um, but let me just show you see you've got to give it a bit of force to get through um, sometimes it will go there you go that's pulled through but you do have to give it a bit of force because it's stiff for plastic um, and wrap it round and then pull it through once you've got it through it is easier to um, get it through well some of them are um, just give it a bit of force that's another stitch and this is single crochet there's 50 stitches on here I did a chain of 50 see what I mean you have to do this um, just to get it pliable and then wrap it round um, and then go into your next it will give as you work with it it will give but there's another one which is really close together and you've got it and my hands are not very good you've got to keep working it back and forth till it goes in and sometimes I twist my hook round just to get it through um, just keep just keep working with it if you're having a go at this it will get through see but you've got to give it a bit bit more working than you would with a normal plastic bag which is thinner and see it um it does it does what's it on your hands it is a bit hard more harder to work with and just keep doing that i found that that really is helping to get it to get it through um but as i say you will have to use a bit of force to use this okay just work a few more stitches that's why it's taking me some time to do it as well but just keep persevering and they will get through but a bigger needle would probably be best for this but not too big that you can't wrap the yarn round the hook um, I don't own a bigger hook than this apart from a big plastic hook but you do need a metal one for this because I think a plastic hook would break in time because of all the pressure I don't know if you'd use a wooden one whether that would break as well in time but it's wood isn't it so I might give that a go as well another time but as I say yeah just just pull your yarn through that's another one done and you just keep going really you just keep going all the way around now this is what i wanted to do as promised that's enough of that right i turned it upside down okay what i'm using is my plastic knitters darning needle if that's what you call it it's a bit i have tested it before this video and it will go through the holes on the bag the reason because i'm sewing it on okay there's two ways you can apply um your knitted projects to one of these bottom bags and that is either sewing it on afterwards or the neatest way would be to put your yarn through the holes i think i'm not sure um see the holes let me get a crochet needle and show you what i meant perhaps you have to sew them on 
I thought you would be able to put your yarn through there. Perhaps <clears throat> if you were doing a crochet bag with hemp cord and crocheting the bag that way, or very thin um, yarn would go through there. But because this is plastic, let me just go and get a thin crochet hook. I've got my bag up here. I'm just going to see if you can actually get a crochet hook through the yarn. Moment, a thinner one, a much thinner one. Let me have a look because I've got some thin crochet hooks up here. It would have to be a very, very fine crochet hook. Yeah, now this is one of my fine crochet hooks. And this is a 1.5 millimeter. I'm just thinking. Yeah, you can get a 1.5 millimeter crochet hook through those holes. You can get it through without without it causing a problem. That's 1.5 okay that's a 1.5 crochet up let's see if i can get a bigger one through without it causing too many problems will a four go through i have got have i got a smaller one than that that one that's a four as well uh, I've got one here it's on a wooden handle I've got one here that's on a wooden handle that I had out of a free kit now bear in mind that one was a 1.5 that went through okay that's a 2.5 let's see if that will go through the holes yeah a 2.5 will go through as well, millimetres. Okay, so those are good. Now this is a 4 millimetre crochet hook. Will that go through? It will, but with a bit of force. I wouldn't use any bigger than that though. Hmm, yeah. Actually, that is a bit, um, it has made the old made the hole a bit bigger yeah that's distorting it a little bit though that is distorting it a little bit that's a four mil okay so a 1.5 and a 2.5 is comfortable do i have one in between that okay that will go through it's not distorted it too much so I would say, yeah, a 4.0 is about your limit to go through there. I couldn't stick my 7 through that I'm working with. So a 1.5, a 2.5, that's okay. Let me just see if I've got one in between. Let me see if I've got one in between. What's that one? That's a 1.0. I've even got a 1.0 millimetre crochet up, which is very small. So a 2.5, I think that's that's about the the uh, smallest one. I've, oh, hang on. No, that's a knitting needle. That's a 5. No, that's too big. That'll be too big as well. That's a 6.5, no, that's too big. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah 1.0 are definitely going, but that's to knit, that's to crochet with very, very fine um, 
crochet. Holly makes um, it's a 1.0. I've already said that one. Yeah, that's a Molly makes one. Um, I have got some more crochet up downstairs. A 1.0, a 1.5, a 2.5 and a 4.0 is the biggest. The smallest is a 4, a, a 1 millimetre. The biggest you can put into this is a 4 millimetre. Okay, so you will be able to crochet through those holes with your yarn you would be able to do that okay what most people do but for demonstration purposes of this video i'm doing it with my knitters darning needle or sewing darning needle okay now i have got hemp cord it is from Jewelry Maker. The Emp cord is this pack is multicolored. There's some plain Emp cord, and there's you know some brown, and there's green, and there's blue, yellow, red. Um, yeah, so that was from Jewelry Maker. I forget how much I paid for that. Okay, I'm not using that one today, but what I do have is all, I have white, I have um, EQ, I would say, brown and black. I'm going to use that colour today because it will blend in with this colour. This is a, I think that was, um, that's either blue or sure it was black because i i ordered the handles with it as well anyway i would if it was like say i'd done my bagging like say um gold fabric or something i've got these lovely threads sari threads i think they are um and then what i got off um obby maker a few years ago i haven't used them yet i've even got them in bronze gold and copper uh, bronze copper and gold they're lovely aren't they be a shame when i use them because i don't even know if you can get any more because they're like a couple of years old but I bought those because I was going to do some necklaces, I think. I, that's for another day. I was going to crochet some some strands, some um, chains. But that's for another day. Okay. So I'm using M cord. This is for jewellery making and macrame. But because it's it's strong, oh, it's not it's not black when you take it out the packet. It does look like that, but it's not. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, well, actually, that that's quite close on screen. It does look black, but it's not black. It's like a very very dark brown. Okay. So anyway. And it's thin enough as well to get through. That's that's why I wanted to use it. And you can use this in jewellery making and macrame. Now, I have the macrame boards, but I haven't even attempted to do macrame. I have a I have a couple of books on ma micro macrame, macrame or macrame or whatever you call it, macrame. I call it. A lot of people call it something else um so yeah so when i get round to it i'll do some videos on micro macron i've never done it before i've got the boards i've got the big board and i've got the small board and i haven't done it yet okay 
so let's get some let's get some um where's my scissors let's get some cord cut i've got it or what i might do i'm just trying to think how much i'm gonna need for this oh dear i don't really you know what i'm gonna start with it long i'm gonna give it i'm gonna do it double double the length because this is like guesswork i'm not sure i'm not sure how much i'm gonna need so i'm gonna try and cut how this is gonna be enough uh where's my scissors gone i had, I had some scissors on here um Oh, hang on, hang on. No, sorry, they're here. My cricket scissors. They're a bit sticky at the moment. Need to get, right, I'm gonna cut that. Okay. Right. I've got I've got this length. Because <laughs> I'm not sure how much I'm gonna need to sew it on. Yeah, if you if you look at that on the screen. It looks black, but it's not. It's very dark brown. So double the length as you would if you were doing macrame. Okay. Now, I've never done this before. I have got a workhorse. It's not... If you don't know what that is, it's a wooden helper. So you stick your material in between. I have got one because I was going into leather craft. I have got one and usually if you're sewing up a bag you usually use that you put it in between close it up it's like a vice it's a hands-free vice it's called a workhorse it's not an actual horse but right now uh, okay let me see where to start um right i've got it no it's that way isn't it because i'm doing it that way okay this would be the best you'll have to bear with me folks because i've never done this before so this is this is i hope this is going to be big enough when i measured it it was big enough but let's see oh dear right so what i'm gonna have to do is i think if I start, I'm just thinking, let's try and squash it down a bit. Okay. Let's. Um, right. Okay. Do I go in? I've never done this before. Bear with. Okay. I'm just thinking which is the best way um let me let me put it in this first okay into one of them so what i'm doing is i'm getting my needle and i'm putting it in the first into one of those you see into one of those um stitches the bottom the chain stitch Okay, and at the same time, I need to put it in. Now that's on the edge, isn't it? That's on the edge. So I'm going into. It is going to take a bit. I hope this needle doesn't break because I haven't got another. One. Well, I've got a couple more. Right, because it's on the edge, I'm starting with that one. And you've got to get into the holes as well. At the same time. This is probably why it's better to start crocheting with it than it is to sew it on. Hang on. Let me get. Where is it? Let me get that needle into that first hole. Come on. There we go. Right got to persevere with me folks because i've never done this before okay well that is in there okay i'm pulling it through the eye of the needle will go through 
okay as you can see I'm pulling it through okay um, I'm going to try and um, yeah right I know what I'll do let's do a few stitches this has to be neat okay go into the other hole the second hole that's my first hole that's my second hole okay and now I've got to go back through that one now and down because it's got to go into the plastic as well okay just hold that end bit and then I'm coming through the bottom okay can you see why I'm using hemp cord because it's strong that's what I'm using my idea nobody's told me this I'm just doing this as I'm going along nobody's told me about this try not to get your M cord knotted as well it's just going to take time because I'm not used to this but if I have a go at least I know I've done one I wouldn't do long stitches and do that you know like a whip stitch I wouldn't do that I'd do a straight stitch see because it's so much can you see uh can you see that there so much uh better yeah so much neater if you do a straight stitch not a whip stitch but a straight stitch and then just go around with your bag i'll tie that off after when I get round to the other side and then then I know that that will be neat then okay go into your try and hold that though because you've got to pull it tight okay I've gone into that stitch right go back through otherwise go back through the um go back through that one is it uh yeah go back through there yeah okay and pull through this is just a slow process folks okay i'm just doing it so that okay there we go okay that pulls it you've got you have to get this all malleable <laughs> um okay just so it's neat as well Alright, right, and then into then where is it? Okay, then back through again. gone back through the plastic i'm just thinking is that going to come undone when i go to put it through that hole no it's not that's okay then that's good good so far sorry i've only done one stitch but i've got to secure it and then go into your next stitch along okay then go back through the plastic at the same time 
into the next hole of your plastic there we go then pull through this is why it's good to have a needle like this and the um, hemp cord because it's a lot stronger for bag making okay and then go back through another stitch okay I'll do a few more because you don't want to see me doing all this but you get the general idea making sure that you go through the plastic and your bag and then back through again and then you've got to come back through the plastic again okay um. Okay, so you get the general idea of what I'm trying to do. Okay. But where's my end gone? It's gone inside here. I just need to keep an eye on that. Make sure you, you pull your stitches tight as you're doing this you don't want any loose um, see that's a bit loose there so if I pull on that that will hopefully pull that tight and then pull on that little bit as well there we go just so you keep your stitches taut and none of them are uh, what's it? Try and pull it as much as you can. That's a bit. That's a bit loose. Ah. Okay. Just make sure you're pulling them tight so it's nice and neat. See? That's nice and neat, isn't it? Okay. You won't actually get it all flush. To the thing to the bag bottom um, okay so you get the idea of what I'm trying to do that's three stitches I'll do another couple more and then I will do a, an update of how it looks with the bag bottom on completed I, I'm just going through my plastic again Gotta go through that stitch again. Okay, and through the next hole, which if over here. The reason because I'm using this needle as well is because it won't, as you're sewing, it won't mark the uh, PU lever on the inside it won't mark it because it, it's blunt okay don't use a metal one you get yourself one of these plastic um, needles if this is what you do if this is what you want to do okay so that's my fourth stitch going in now remember push it through there and then go into the next hole along into your plastic okay and pull through remember to pull it tight so it's nice and neat I'm doing really well for the first time. I've got a still master and I haven't had a go of sewing zips in using my sewing machine. 
I've got to have a go. It's my next step. I can thread up a sewing machine now. Because it's a, long a bit of a long story why I couldn't use a machine until I was 40. Um, but now I can and I, I, I persevered and I finally was able to thread up a sewing machine. Um, so... And I haven't even sewn on a button with it yet. I've had it a couple of years. Um, I've had a go at sewing some curtains and putting edding tape on. And I've made, and I was really proud of myself, I made some curtains out of a quilt cover. I'll have to, I'll have to fetch them out because I've still got them. Um, I didn't put any lining in them, but I made them. Not even with a pattern. I measured them out and I got some edding tape and I, I just put the edding tape on. And I was really, really so proud of myself. I'd never made anything on a sewing machine before. And I've also, since then, I did also make a Christmas decoration out of a kit I had off. I think it's Pink Ladies. I think it's... Oh, Pink Ink Ladies. Yeah, I made made that, but that was a bit of trial and error because my machine was a bit, the casing had been pushed in or something and it wasn't sewing right and I managed to get it so right and I managed to do it in the end. Um, so, really proud of myself. I'll have to show you these curtains, but they were done ages ago of um, out of a quilt cover. So... Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. You'll learn at your own time. Uh, there still, that's another story. Anyway, um, so yeah, I haven't even ventured into making a zip. I keep watching videos and think, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. But I haven't ventured into it yet. <laughs> Anyway, let's just do another stitch and the last stitch, that's four. I said I was going to do five. I don't want to do this too long because, um, yeah. So, okay. So, going into my plastic again through there, if you can see. See? That's where my needle is in the bottom of the chain stitch I started with. And then through that hole, pull through. And then back through that hole. Come up, when you've done a stitch, if you come up through that same hole again, you'll pull your stitch back out. Go on to the next hole. And then you go back, you go into the next hole to sew some more, pull it through. And then instead of, and so don't come up through this hole that you just went through with the other stitch. Come up the hole beside it and then finish off by going through that hole that you did that stitch with. Then that way your stitches won't come out. Okay, but then you've got to also put your needle back through that stitch then. Not that stitch, but that stitch where the needle's going in. So it's only so that it helps anchor it onto the plastic. Okay, but as I say, use emp cord, it's the strongest. Right, I'm just doing the last one now, aren't I? No, that's five. Let's just do another one and then that's it. Call it a round even, even number. Okay. Like I said, look, see? 
this is what I'm talking about go back in with your needle okay to anchor it inside okay and don't go through that stitch there to begin with go that one because if you try and go through that one you're pulling your stitch out again okay they're very good these needles I use it in my wool crafts sewing up my scarves and all that like instead of a metal needle and then pull remember to pull to keep it taut and then back through see back through that hole now and then uh, where am I and then through the plastic make sure you go through your plastic as well to anchor it on uh, let me see yeah the next hole that's it I can't on there right pull through and then inside inside there you've got to anchor it on as well so it's been anchored on double okay and then as you pull in go in through with that one you go through the another hole so you start with your other stitch then it will it is a bit um leading the needle in it is a bit of work because it remember it's stiff plastic plastic you're working with and also your um also going through pu lever as well so okay so that's why these needles are the best because you can get round corners and all sorts with them okay all right and then yeah, so I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. I've already done six. Okay, so that's it, folks, for today. As you can see, look at that neatness. But remember to pull your stitches tight as well. And try and find an end cord that, bl that blends in with your bag bottom. Okay, but remember this is a basket, but it's the same purpose. Um. I will come back soon. Um, I don't know how long this will take me to sew. Sorry. Sew this all on. But I'll try and get a few more rows done as well. And then I'll come back with a video and show you how much it's grown. And how the bag bottom looks on my basket. If you like to date. I keep forgetting to do this. Sorry folks. If you liked today's video, please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye bye for now. Take care.